You think the NOP instruction is just one byte of code that does nothing, right? What if I told you that's a lie and the truth reveals a 40-year-old secret hidden inside your CPU? It's hexadecimal 90. In assembly language, it's the mnemonic NOP for no operation. It is the simplest instruction a computer can execute because it does precisely nothing. It takes up a single byte of memory, consumes a handful of clock cycles, and then the processor moves on as if nothing happened. It's the architectural equivalent of a blank stare. Programmers use it as a placeholder, a debugging marker, or sometimes just to waste a microscopic amount of time. It is the most boring, unassuming instruction in the entire x86 instruction set. And yet, nearly everything you assume about it is wrong. The story of NOP isn't the story of doing nothing. It's the story of a complex history of backward compatibility layered on top of backward compatibility, creating a bizarre museum of silicon evolution inside the processor you're using right now. The stakes for understanding this go far beyond a single instruction. Unraveling the mystery of the NOP means unraveling the core design philosophy of the x86 architecture itself. A philosophy that has dominated computing for over 40 years. It reveals how chip designers at Intel and AMD have been forced to solve the same problem over and over again. How to build the future without breaking the past. To begin, we must go to the source of all truth for x86 architecture, the Intel Software Developers Manual. This multi-thousand page document is the Bible for low-level engineers. Buried deep within volume two of this dense tome, we find the entry for NOP. The manual confirms that the one byte instruction, opcode, 0x90 does nothing, but then it reveals the first secret. This opcode is actually a special case encoding of a completely different instruction. XEJEAX EAX. That's the XE change instruction, which swaps the values in two registers. In this case, it's swapping the EAX register with itself. The result is Functionally, nothing. The value in EAX remains unchanged. Imagine the faint, steady hum of your computer's fan, a constant background noise that signifies operation without progress. That is the sound of XCHG EAX EAX. It's an instruction that burns a cycle for no logical result. But this single byte form is an optimization, a convenient accident. The processor recognizes this specific exchange with self and treats it as a special, fast NOP. What if this convenient accident was just the tip of a much larger, stranger iceberg, hinting at a whole family of instructions that do nothing in far more complex ways. The Intel manual doesn't stop there. Immediately after defining the classic 0x NOP, it presents a table that shatters our simple understanding. The table is titled Recommended Multi-Byte NOP Sequences. It lists sequences of two, three, four, all the way up to nine bytes each of which is a valid and officially recommended no operation instruction. For example, a two byte NOP is listed as 0x666, 0x90. A three byte NOP is X0F, X1F, X0. These are not random bytes. They are a carefully curated sequence of instruction prefixes followed by other opcodes. 
There's a palpable feeling of confusion as you stare at the table. The black and white text of the PDF Clinical and Absolute. These are the official ways for your multi-gigahertz bleeding edge processor to waste space. But why? Why would an engineer ever need a seven byte instruction to do the exact same nothing that a single byte can accomplish? The answer lies at the very heart of high performance computing alignment. Modern CPUs are incredibly complex, deeply pipeline machines. They fetch instructions from memory in large chunks called cache lines, typically 64 bytes at a time. The processor loves it. When the target of a jump instruction, like the beginning of a loop, is located at the very start of one of these cache lines. A misaligned jump target can cause a subtle but significant performance penalty, a stutter in the otherwise smooth flow of the instruction pipeline. You can almost feel the difference. The crisp, instantaneous snap of a perfectly aligned jump versus the frustrating micro hiccup of a misaligned one. To solve this, Compilers and assemblers use NOPs as padding. If a critical loop starts three bytes away from a cache line boundary, the compiler will insert a three byte NOP to push it into perfect alignment. This is the primary reason the multi-byte NOPs exist. But this raises an even deeper question. If you just need three bytes of padding, why use the very specific 0x0f, 0x1f, 0x0x0 sequence? Why not just use three single byte 0x90 NOPs in a row? This is where we must dig into the history of the architecture back to the days of the Intel 8086 processor in the late 1970s. The 8086 instruction set was designed with a system of prefixes. These were special bytes you could place before an instruction to modify its behavior. For example, a rep prefix would repeat the following string instruction. An operand size override prefix, 0x66, could change a 16-bit operation into a 32-bit one. Imagine peeling back layers at an archaeological dig. The modern processor is the topsoil, but just beneath it lie the artifacts of older, stranger designs. The official multi-byte NOPs are constructed from these historical prefixes. The two-byte NOP 0x666 0x90 is an operand size prefix followed by a regular NOP. The processor sees the prefix, thinks for a moment about doing a 32-bit NOP instead of a 16-bit one, realizes that's a meaningless distinction, and ultimately does nothing. The longer NOPs use even more obscure prefixes, remnants of instruction that are barely used anymore. These specific combinations are what Intel and AMD have officially designated as the preferred way to pad code. But what happens if a programmer decides to go off script and create their own padding? This leads us to the unofficial NOPs. The truth is any instruction or sequence of instructions that has no effect on the machine's user visible state can be considered a NOP. A classic example is MoVi EDI, EDI. This is a three byte instruction on most systems that moves the value from the EDI register into the EDI register. It accomplishes nothing, has no side effects, and is therefore a perfectly valid, if unofficial, three byte no P. You can construct thousands of these. LEAESE, -E -E ESI plus zero is another. You can feel the quiet confidence that comes from looking at the raw assembly, realizing you can build a machine that does nothing in countless 
baroque, and utterly useless ways. This is where the idea of zillions of encodings comes from. The possibility space is enormous, but this creates a critical problem for the CPU designer. If there are thousands of ways to do nothing, how does a processor handle them efficiently? Does it have to fully decode MoV EDI? EDI just to realize it's pointless? This brings us to the final crucial reveal. The reason the Intel and AMD manuals provide a recommended list of multibyte NOPs is because modern CPUs contain special hardware to recognize and optimize for precisely those sequences. When the processor's instruction decoder sees the official 3-byte NOP sequence, it doesn't have to decode it like a normal instruction. It recognizes the pattern and effectively skates over it in a single cycle without engaging the full decoding pipeline. It's a hardware fast path. If, however, it sees an unofficial NOP like MoV, EDI, EDI, it has no choice but to decode it, schedule it, and execute it like any other move instruction. The decoder does real work, consuming resources only to achieve a null result. The shocking truth is that not all nothing is created equal. The official recommended way of doing nothing is orders of magnitude faster and more efficient than any of the clever, unofficial ways. The secret history of the NOP is the secret history of x86 itself. It's a story that starts with a simple idea, an instruction to do nothing, and becomes layered with decades of baggage. The need for backward compatibility meant old prefixes could never be removed. The demand for higher performance led to complex pipelines and caches, which in turn created the need for alignment. That need was met by using the old, crusty prefixes to create multi-byte padding. And finally, the need to make that padding fast required building new special purpose hardware to recognize the very patterns created by the old hardware. It's a microcosm of the entire architecture, a museum of brilliant solutions to self-inflicted problems, all in the name of progress that never breaks from the past. So the next time you see that single humble 0x90 byte in a debugger, remember the strange, complex, and deeply fascinating history it represents. It's not just a blank stare, it's a window into the soul of the machine. If you find these architectural deep dives compelling and want to understand the why behind the code you write, consider following for more secrets hidden in the silicon.